combination therapies are when you stack a number of different modes together. Right now, I'm getting some ozone. I got magnesium sulfate, Epsom salt in my ice bath, so I'm getting cold. Little sunshine, some light, some ozone therapy, and some salt halotherapy. All at once. Some stacks give you more than the sum of their parts. That is, some stacks add together, like thermal contrast therapy, so they give you more than the individual modes alone. But the problem in science is that everybody breaks things down into one variable at a time. So nobody studies thermal contrast therapy. They study sauna or they study ice bath. They don't study them together. When you think about how our ancient ancestors must have evolved, they never isolated just one variable. They went into the cold water to find their shellfish or their fish to do their foraging. They came out, they sat in front of the fire to rewarm. They got light from the sun, from the fire, the infrared. They got cold water, they got dry heat. They did it all at once and they likely added exercise. It might not have been a lot of exercise, but think about these three variable, that is these anti-fragile approaches. You could be hot, you could be cold, that's temperature. And when you vary them, you introduce that sort of, that hormetic, that anti-fragile response in your body that becomes more adaptive and resilient to both. You can do exercise, you can do rest. You need them both. You have to alternate between the two to get the benefits of either. You can do light and you can do dark. You need them both throughout a diurnal cycle. You need the sunshine in the day and of course you need the darkness at night. And we screw ourselves up using too much artificial light during both the day and the night. It robs us of this anti-fragile variability that our ancient ancestors would have had naturally. So how do we incorporate this kind of anti-fragile variability of temperature exercise and light into our ice bath practice. There is a new protocol, Mike Mutzel got me thinking about it when I uh, went up to visit him and we had a good podcast, I went straight into his, he's got a wood fired sauna, it's a thing of beauty, went straight into his sauna after my ice bath and shortly after Mike posted a video about the benefits of sauna and exercise. Now you already know cold exposure, exercise, big boost in testosterone, big anabolic gains. And what Mike has added is do your sauna after your exercise. We're now talking cold, light exercise. It doesn't have to be huge. It can be a big workout if you want, but start light so you can rewarm your limbs, rewarm your body. And then sauna for recovery from the exercise. As far as I can tell, almost nobody is doing this. Cold, exercise, heat. And keep it as a dry heat, not the hot tub. The hot tub will induce vasoconstriction. What you're looking for for that recovery is vasodilation. And I'm really curious about if you start doing this protocol, cold, exercise, sauna, are you gonna see another boost in your results? Let me know. I think I'll do a little red light rewarm in the meantime.